So I went into London yesterday. But the reason I went to London was to meet up with Nick Daniel, uh, who's a great friend and colleague and an absolutely amazing oboe player. One of, one of the world's great oboe players, I would say. Nick's one of these people who has such a joy and enthusiasm for, for life, but you know, for music in particular, it's in his whole soul, you can just feel it. Nick's had an amazing career. He was a young musician of the year back in the 80s and recently he was awarded the Queen's Medal for Music, which is only given to one musician a year, so it's a really prestigious award. And Nick took some time out for me just to answer 10 questions with Nick Daniel. It's kind of pretentious, <laughs> but the first piece of music I fell in love with was a Te Deum by Benjamin Britten. And the thing is, I was very lucky to be a chorister at Salisbury Cathedral. And I knew music did things to me, I could feel it. And I, I didn't understand it. I'm I not sure I understand it now entirely. But um, all I know is that whenever we had to sing anything by Britain, it was as though hairs on my body that a 10 year old boy shouldn't have stood up <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> very first term as a choir boy at Salisbury, our, our um, French teacher was taking a music lesson and he played us a recording of the, Re of the War Requiem by Britain. And I've never forgot just being pinned to the wall by, by the sound of Galina Vishnevskaya's voice. The thing is, when you're a little boy and you have a voice that can sing and then you're put into a choir like that, you're thrown into the most serious and sometimes the most serious music any composer writes. I'm a firm believer that we need to think right back to our first breaths. and We need to, to work with breathing. Breathing is my absolute life. And we can work with breathing, and we can learn a lot about ourselves from breathing. I think that the great thing about music and about being a musician is that we're pretty much constantly faced with who we are and what we can't do. <laughs> That's rather sobering. And I've always been rather resistant to talking about being an artist because it sounds so horribly fey and affected. But actually, right now, in this, in this uh, culture of, of the era of, of uh, Trump and of Brexit and of the rise of the far right, the thing is, you can be overwhelmed by those things. But actually, in the end, all you can do is to continue talking about and applying to yourself the rules that, that being an artist is something of benefit to society. Unless we're prepared to stand out, out there and... and and actually not only allow our playing to speak, but to speak out and say that the role of the artist is an absolutely crucial one to counterbalancing um, madness and, and, uh, and destruction, then uh, I think we're not, we're not really pulling our weight and we need to do that right now. I want to jump out of an aeroplane. Ah, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I want to be given the chance to show that I can really conduct a big orchestra and do a good job of it um, in my home country. <laughs> Snapchat is just a load of completely un understandable stuff, but they have great filters, <gasps> kitties and things. 
I would love to walk in the Dalai Lama's shoes for one day because I was once blessed by a wonderful Buddhist monk and it felt like I'd been injected through my hand with warmth and he just touched my hand and I couldn't understand what was happening. I thought I was having a heart attack or something. It was just this warmth that went right through me. If that's what your everyday Buddhist monk can do, then what could the Dalai Lama do? I don't know. Well, I think I'd like to be an agent because I'd be the best bloody agent anybody's ever known. I'm, I'm very blessed with my agent, having said that, and I'd like to run a record company alongside it, if that's okay. Okay, if I had um, an animal demon, it would be a lion. Because um, I always thought of myself as a daddy lion to my kids, and they kind of think of me as that. I, I can roar quite loud, and I've got pretty sharp claws if I need them. But I'm also very protective and loyal and, and uh, sleepy. Well, it's first of all taught me that I basically know nothing, and that there is always so much more to understand, even about... Maybe in a context of pieces I've played hundreds of times or taught hundreds of times, there's always something new. But I think increasingly I'm realising that you have to constantly just quietly look at yourself and look inside at who you are and see whether you are meeting your needs. Muzak. O-M-G. Singing Christmas carols in November, please. No, just no.